There are a few studies in the literature uh, speaking about uh, this problem. And uh, what we know is that uh, upper airway obstruction uh, is frequent. Uh, and um, uh, the only retrospective study showed uh, in ALS patient that um, uh, actually this is a, a very frequent problem. In uh, ALS patient, uh, in this study, uh, authors divided the patient according to the oxygen saturation during the night in uh, bad ventilated and good ventilated patient. And they found that uh, bad ventilated patient were, was 50% uh, and the most important cause was uh, the upper airway obstruction. So only in this population we have data, we don't have uh, epidemiological data of the prevalence of this problem during non-invasive ventilation, but we perceive that this is really a very frequent problem. Even about this problem, we don't have uh, uh, data about prevalence, but uh, Actually, the, the uh, feeling is that the most important uh, uh, cause is what we see also in uh, OSA patient. That is uh, the pharyngeal collapse of uh, um, the, the, the pharyngeal tract collapse. And uh, um, this is the most frequent cause in neuromuscular and even in COPD patient. Actually, there is another uh, possibility of upper airway obstruction during mechanical ventilation, that is uh, the glottis closure. This is a completely different uh, mechanism and a different uh, uh, site of obstruction that is lower, and it is uh, at uh, uh, the glottic uh, uh, plane. And uh, uh, even the mechanism underlined is completely different. This is a big problem uh, during non-invasive ventilation because, uh, first of all, uh, the second mechanism uh, I explained before, that is the glottic closure, is induced by non-invasive ventilation. So this is one uh, uh, type of upper airway obstruction more frequently uh, view in the, this in patient uh, uh, ventilated by uh, mask. And uh, this is uh, due to uh, the high pressure, the high volume uh, in used by the ventilator. This is a, um, a reflex induced by a very abrupt uh, reduction of PCO2 or uh, an hypocapnia induced by ventilation that uh, induce uh, a glottic closure by a reflex. This is one of the most frequent uh, mechanisms of upper airway obstruction induced by non-invasive ventilation. But uh, in the literature, uh, some authors describe other mechanisms, like, for example, some uh, uh, obstruction induced by the use of uh, the facial mask. The oronasal mask, actually, by pushing the jaw, it can induce a drawback of the tongue and the soft palates, and they induce uh, a, an obstruction at this level. And uh, uh, this is another mechanism that we, mm, we should take in account uh, in this kind of patient. And the last mechanism that was described was uh, in uh, some uh, bulbar patient, uh, above all uh, in ASL, a sort of drawback uh, of the epiglottics uh, and that uh, also may induce uh, an upper way obstruction. Actually, we don't really know, but um, we can say that uh, in neuromuscular patient, uh, we may have both mechanism, that is uh, pharyngeal collapse due to uh, the upper airway um, problem, but also we can have uh, uh, the glottic closure because these patients uh, are uh, well ventilated during the night and uh, the mechanism of the abrupt decrease of PCO2 may be frequent. 
So restrictive patient, neuromuscular patient, uh, are patient uh, uh, in, in which more frequently we can see both mechanisms. The use of flow and pressure curve that we can uh, uh, record with the ventilator, with the, the home care ventilators, are useful to detect this phenomena. Because uh, what we see on the flow curves is that there is a, a recurrent and uh, uh, abrupt decrease of the flow, which assumes also a waveform of a square or a zero flow. That means that uh, in that time there is an upper away obstruction. So by uh, reviewing the recording uh, flow curve uh, with uh, uh, a window of 5-10 minutes, uh, we can detect this phenomena. But what this kind of uh, waveform uh, tells us is only that uh, there is an obstruction of the upper airway, but uh, they don't tell us which kind of mechanism is underlined this problem. And uh, uh, in this case, by adding bells, we can have more information because if the upper airway obstruction is due to the pharyngeal collapse, in this case, we will have a drive active, even more active. That means that uh, on the bells, uh, we'll, we'll see a movement. Otherwise, if the obstruction is the glottic closure that is induced by hypocapnia and is a reflex of hyperventilation, in this case, we will have no drive activity. And so on the bells, we, we will not see a, dry, a movement of the bells. So uh, the use of the bells is uh, very useful uh, to understand the mechanism underlying. We have to know that uh, the bells are not useful to understand if the other possible, possible mechanism induced by ventilation, for example, the uh, drawbacks of the tongue or the drawbacks of epiglottics are not well detected by only the, the bells. In that case, we need video laryngoscopy. Actually, what we have to fault is the mechanism underlying the upper airway obstruction. So, if the mechanism is the pharyngeal collapse, in that case, an increase in EPAP is what we need during non-invasive ventilation to solve the problem. Otherwise, if the mechanism is uh, the reflect uh, glottic closure in this case, uh, we know that uh, the uh, hyperventilation is the cause, the abrupt decrease of PCO2 is the cause. In that case, we need uh, to reduce the pressure. So uh, the intervention on the setting is completely different. So we have to know this, above all, when uh, we decide to use, uh, for example, some algorithm with uh, EPAP, uh, variable EPAP, uh, because in that case, uh, what the software do is only to detect the obstruction. The software is not able to detect the level of the obstruction and uh, consequently is not able to detect uh, also the mechanism underlined. So uh, useful to use algorithm, but is very important to monitor uh, what we do with uh, this software, because uh, the, so the software cannot be right. Yes, I, can, I think that uh, the most important paper where um, you can find the differences uh, in the traces uh, uh, between the different kind of obstruction could be a paper published by Jesus Bermejo Gonzalez in Thorax, um, 2012. And uh, another important uh, paper, uh, descriptive paper, is um, a paper made by um, a group, uh, uh, a Spanish group. The first name uh, is uh, Catalan and uh, it is 
published on respiratory care uh, 2017 and uh, uh, you can find there some uh, uh, video laryngoscopy images about the different mechanism of upper airway obstruction.